Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 80, recorded November 28th, 2012. Pierre Olivier Latour and Everpix. Triangulation is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, visit Stamps.com, click on the microphone, and enter Triangulation. And by Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker looking for video, photos, illustrations, music, sound effects, after effects templates, or 3D models, check out Pond5. And don't forget to download 50 free stock media files at Pond5.com slash triangulation. It's time for Triangulation. I love this show. I've missed it so much. A chance for me to get together with some of the smartest, most interesting people in the business and uh, pick their brains for an hour. And yes, you too, because that's the triangulation part. It's me, it's our guest, and it's also you in the chat room. Your questions, uh, your thoughts, and your comments, and we'll incorporate them in as the show goes. Before I do that, though, I want to thank everybody who filled in for me on triangulation. It was Tom Merritt, right? Sarah Lane, right? Who else? And I as Actar. So that's great. Thank you guys for doing the, doing the heavy lifting while I was uh, gone. But I'm back, baby. And I've got a great guest. His name is Pierre Olivier Latour. He is, as you might guess from his name, uh, from France. He was trained uh, in Switzerland, in Lausanne. Uh, but you may know him better by the products he has created. He did a program. It was called Pixel. Well, well first of all, welcome. Thank Pierre. you. I'm going to call you Pierre. Yes, that's perfect. Fewer syllables. Fine, uh, it's good to have you. Thanks for, for joining us, Triangulation. Pixel Shock. Shocks. Shocks. Yes. S-H-O-X. Yes. Now, people say, oh, I don't know Pixel Shocks, but you may know Quartz Composer. Mm-hmm. Apple bought Pixel Shocks. Yes, that's correct. And Quartz Composer, if you have Xcode, is so cool. It lets you tie these nodes one to the other and use all the Apple core uh, imaging stuff to yes. pass stuff through. It's amazing. So uh, yeah. that was your first product? That was, um, that was not my first product in Absolute, but that was the first one that ended up having such a reach. You did Comic Flow. That's uh, a awesome. side project from today. Oh, awesome you like that? project. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and uh, so you're a programmer by training. Is that your interest? Uh, my, my education training is actually in robotics. Robotics? Yes. Uh, but I have always done software engineering programming on the side since yeah. a very long time and building uh, commercial applications or sharewares or technologies like at Apple right. and now this, this um, photo startup. And then another product that a lot of people will be aware of is Cool Iris, which mm-hmm. is very cool. That was the gallery app that... Uh, and actually, I think that Google licensed it for Android's gallery. So that was done. I worked at Cool Iris for a couple of years yeah. um, from Japan, actually. It was... A, Great experience. You were in Japan. Though. I was in Japan from wow. 2009 to 2011. Interesting. Yes. yes. Wow. Um, had great opportunity to work with very talented um, Tokyo designers who brought really a fresh eye on it's how you can amazing. do Amazing. Yes. I love Cool Iris. And it's, a, it's an app for the iPad and iPhone. So the one you described, the, the gallery app for Android, that was yeah. actually something done before I, I joined Cool Iris. Um, the, what I specifically worked on at Cool Iris was the Discover application, uh-huh. which was the Wikipedia reader. Oh, love that. And, I uh, love that. You did that? Yeah. That was, that was so, and is that still available? I don't know. I mean, I left Kularis. Uh, it was in beta for a while, but remember, it took all the information from yes. Wikipedia and made it beautiful. I think it even read it to you, did it not? It wasn't reading it to you, okay. but it was a very interesting project because at the time we were trying to figure out, Kularis being a very visual company, right. you know, um, the iPad had just been released, right. such a great format, finally a tablet that have a chan- has a chance of succeeding with right. the mass market. Right. And what can you build that's original on it? And I like challenges in general. So one challenge is, one challenge is how you display text in an interesting way on a tablet. Right. And what's a great source of text? Well, Wikipedia is one, right? Yeah. But it's an encyclopedia, so it's a little bit boring too. Right. So yeah, the text floated in and moved around. We had... Well, the I idea wish I was, had a copy of it here Well, somewhere. I was looking for it this morning on the App Store. I couldn't find it, I so maybe it's, it's temporarily pulled. Yeah. Um, but so the idea was... 
I came up with uh, one night was, let's try to present the content of Wikipedia like a magazine mm -hmm. so that the idea is every day you launch the app and you get a fresh new cover. Mm. And there's a great source for a cover, which is the article of the day on Wikipedia, right. which is always right. high quality, and you right. got the photo of the day. Right. So you had the back page of the magazine, and the front page, which was the article of the day, the back page was the, the photo, photo of the day, right? Yeah. Full size, beautiful. Right. And then we were looking for a number of um, categories on Wikipedia to build a fake, uh, you know, like you have on magazine covers, different sections and things like that. And that was an interesting project because it was right at the beginning of the wave of let's do everything like magazine style on iPad. Right. Flipboard, Flipboard. Was, yeah, yeah. was released, I think, a couple of weeks before. It was very interesting timing or three weeks before. Mm -hmm. And that was really at the beginning of all this, this um, new direction. You've also done game programming. Yes, that was actually my first company. That was um, a game company for Mac. Uh, I was working on while I was studying for my um, engineering degree in Switzerland. And so it was a group of about 10 people, um, half Swiss, half French people, more working remotely, now and then getting together for like a month or something. And we built a, a video game for Mac uh, that was released, I think, in the year 2000. There was a great experience. Of what was that? It was called Water Race. It was a racing game uh -huh. of boats. And uh, we had some very beautiful graphics. We had awesome music to go with it. People loved the music. Um, and we got pretty good reviews. It was mostly known in, uh, in Europe. Uh, in the US, it was just sold directly online. But in Europe, we had, it was sold physically in stores mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, it was a great experience, you know, first startup, right? And... Um, being able to work with many people in a distributed way, being able to work with uh, distributors, which was a great experience as well. Like I learned, for example, that even if you do your best possible work for building a product and you really polish everything and you work hard, then you have the distribution step. And in that case, we had some serious problem with a very large distributor oh. in, uh, in Europe. And you know, by the time the, um, the copies hit the shelves, the promotion was already out yeah. in, the, in the newspapers and things like that. So bad timing and then payment problems. And that really discouraged a number of people on the team. So we followed the company. Uh, we folded it uh, in 2002, I think. This is why developers embrace the App Store from Apple, even though you give up some stuff and you have to get approved. Mm -hmm. At least you don't have to worry about shelves and yes. boxes. It and does help a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it does level the competing, competitive uh, field right. quite a bit. Everybody's an equal. Mm -hmm. Somebody like Rovio can come along do Angry Birds and, and take over the world. Absolutely. And whoever heard of <laughs> Rovia. No, it's, do you it's, do it's robotics at all anymore? Not really. Not really. Do you miss it? Um, I really like robotics, yeah. indeed. It's a fascinating Were you doing field. it for industrial applications? or? Uh, so what I learned at school, really, because I didn't apply it right. in the industry afterwards, was indeed um, for uh, in the medical field ah. and in the um, manufacturing field. Interesting. But it's interesting because there's no user interface for robotics is not important. And everything you do now, it's mm -hmm. about user interface. It's about beautiful design. Yes. Consumer software, yes. Consumer software. I think Apple changed uh, really the, the, the game here. Right. Because 10 years ago, people, except people using Mac product essentially, um, were not really paying attention or putting any value on the design and elegance of products. Right. And I would say there are a few companies from my perspective, like uh, Nintendo with the Wii, uh, and Apple of course, with all its uh, series of hits, which really started making people aware that great design, great user interface, really brings some value, concrete value, because you spend less time tinkering with the product, you enjoy it more, right. and yes, it's worth paying a little more to have that. Right. So, and um, I think the way it actually become, became possible is because of the iPhone. Because on the, on the desktop computer, if you wish, uh, in the desktop computer world, people were really stuck with the type of interface we had for a very long time, and it's very hard to move the incumbent. iPhone, it was, the competition was so bad at the time, you could almost start fr from fr start, a clean right? start, yeah. And then you expose all the casual users to something that really works great from the start. No so windows, the no menus, yeah. full screen, touch, and so everything is new. It's, it's fast, fresh. It's it, works, fast. it works great. It's and always connected. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very important. Yeah. So for people like, um, like for example, the, the, the startup we have now, made of people who really care about the quality of the product and so on, what's, rec what's comforting is that um, we hope to find enough users who see value in that now. Right. And it might have been a lot harder 10 years ago, for instance. Right. right. 
So you've worked for big companies, but you decided, is this, the, this isn't the first company you started. Uh, that is, in effect, the second. Second, because yes, yes. you started the gaming company as mm -hmm. a student. Um, what made you want to start your own company? Um, it's, I would say the, the, um, the willingness to really be in control yeah. of, of your destiny and what you yeah. do with your ideas. Yeah. I think it's Same very important. Yeah. Control. Yes. You want to, and you don't want somebody else to decide what's good and what's bad. You get to do it. Well, you always have people above you, right? right. Whether it's your investors or <laughs> somebody told me that. Consumers, I but. said I don't want to work for the man. You know the phrase "the yeah, man." Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, somebody said, I think it was Patrick Norton. There's always Leo. There's always a man. <laughs> You're never the man. Yeah. There's always somebody. So you have investors now. You were angel, of angel yes. funding. We are we are a pre-series A, so we have seed funding, and we did convertible note before that, and so okay. on. So the man's not yes. too too demanding. We're talking to uh, Pierre Olivier Latour. His friends call him Paul, P O L. Yes. Uh, I'm going to call him Pierre, and we're going to ask you, we're going to talk about Everpix, which is mm -hmm. your startup, and the idea behind it. The first thing I thought is he's going straight after Flickr, but I guess I was wrong. Well, so it's something a little different. We're going to talk about it in just yes. a second, but first let me remind everybody about uh, this time of year. What, do you remember last time, uh, last, last time, last December, going to the post office? Ah! Bad news. Go to this. Now you don't have to anymore. Stamps.com. Stamps.com is for the postal pro. So if you're an amateur, you're just mailing some Christmas. Don't worry about it. But if you have, if you, if mailing is part of your job, if you do fulfillment, if you're an Amazon seller, an eBay seller, a, a PayPal seller, Etsy, and you got to do fulfillment, you got to be a postal pro. And the postal pros know, go into the post office. That's for the amateurs. The pros use stamps.com. It lets you buy and print official U.S. postage right from your computer and your printer. You don't need a postage meter. You don't need a special inks. But more importantly, it kind of does all the labor of fulfillment for you. So if you're an eBay, Amazon, PayPal seller, Etsy seller, it takes the data. So you've sold something. It takes the data from the buyer, automatically puts it in the mailing label, you've got the scale, the USB scale, you plop the package on there, it prints out the mailing label, the exact right printed postage, puts your marketing message on that, your logo if you want, fills out forms if it's international, does all of that, and it even gives you discounts the post office won't give you. Uh, up to 21% on express mail, 15% on priority mail. It sends an email automatically out to the recipient on those two and says, hey, expect your package is going to be delivered on this day. I mean, this is for the postal Pro. It's stamps.com. If you do a lot of mailing, it is well worth it. Now, uh, if you go to stamps.com, you're going to see that there is a no-risk trial offer. That is not our offer. Please click the radio microphone. Heard about us on a radio or podcast? Click here. And then enter in the offer code triangulation. Name of the show, triangulation. And press go. Ah, now you know you're in the right spot because you see some old guy smiling at you saying, hey, here's a $110 bonus offer, $55 in postage coupons, a free digital scale, a $5, that's, that's the USB scale I was talking about. You just pay postage and handling for that. It's worth about, I think it's $5 on the postage and handling. Four-week trial, and now you got stamps.com, and I'm telling you, you will say thank you. You won't have to go to the post office this month or any month ever again. The mail carrier comes, picks it up. Everything looks super pro. It even prints right on the envelope if you want. Stamps.com. Remember, go to the page, click the microphone, and use the offer code triangulation for our no-risk trial offer. Stamps.com. We're talking to Paul Pierre-Olivier Latour about uh, his new startup. So I'm excited because I'm everything you've done, Comic Flow, so cool. Cool Iris, just amazing. Discover, amazing, uh, and I, I, one of my favorite parts of Xcode is the is the quartz uh, editor. It's so, it's just drag and drop, and you draw the lines. But I mean, it's so amazing. Quartz Composer is amazing. So I'm very intrigued by what you're going to do here with Everpix. Okay. Now, uh, you've been in a one year closed beta, right? Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. So it is now for the first time public. Yes. So people can sign up. Now, somebody in the chat room just said, because you said off when we were just beginning, oh, don't, don't do that yet. We're oh, going to launch it on Thursday. I was referring specifically to um, email syncing. So people shouldn't hold off now. Absolutely not. There's no reason. Go to Everpix. You'll enter your email address right there. And I got an email instantly, mm -hmm. and I was able it to should, sign yes. up. Um, but I thought, looking at this, it says, snap all the photos you want, spend more time enjoying them, discover what you have, share what you love, 
I kind of read the last part more than it. I thought it's like, oh, it's Flickr. Mm -hmm. But it's not. No, no, we're not trying to replace Flickr. Um, our goal is not to build a, a community of photographers. We think there are already great solutions for that or great uh, startup building it. What we're really trying to solve is reconnecting people, average users, not pro photographers or semi-pros, average people reconnect them to their increasingly large photo collections. Well, and that's what's happened with digital photography. It's, right. uh, it's overwhelming. Yeah, you could take a lot of pictures if they're free, but th what's not free is your time going through them when you get back. I just got back from a trip. I have literally 700 photos. Typically, I'll have thousands. Mm -hmm. And I never go through them because it's like, oh, I don't even want to look at them. So what do you do to make that easier? So it's, it's a few steps. It's a very interesting problem because we have to deal with such a large amount of photos. Um, from what we see, the average user, you know, um, will have almost 10,000 photos in our system by the, uh, by the end of the year. And that's a massive amount of photo to deal with, to be able to engage with, to, to revisit, and to be able to share if you want to do so. So um, one of the first things we realized we're tackling this problem is that, of course, you need to have all the photos in one place because it simplifies things. But that's really... That means not just the photos on your hard drive. That's correct, But on yes. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook... Yes. And Flickr, you support all of those. Yes, so that's a prerequisite, though. Right. That doesn't really solve anything because you're Picasso taking the mess that's yep. yes, you're taking the mess that's in multiple places right. and consolidating it's in, a big pile into a, <laughs> yeah, it's a single mess instead of multiple. One mess, right? That doesn't really Thanks. solve anything. And then on the the other interesting thing is a ton of people are working on the other end of the equation, which is how do you share? Right. How do Instagram you is, is actually perfect. Facebook is perfect for sharing right. everything I need. So you were smart not to say. We're going to be a better Flickr because, frankly, there already is a better Flickr. Yes, it's Instagram, and, it's Facebook. And it works fine. And so, it works fine. So, however, there's this, this elephant in the room which nobody's really addressing, which is when you have a collection, when an average user has a collection of 10,000, 20,000 photos, how, how do you get them to engage again, to enjoy these photos? And this is not just a problem of putting it in one place. Then you have to be able to make sense of the collection. You've got to be able to understand the photos, to extract what matters, and then show it to the user, simplify it, so that they can share it very easily with their friends. So it's a very visual thing. I think it's easier if I show in practice okay. how things work. So, you right? Have it. so right now, it's a Mac, it's a website. Correct. With, that does all that, right? So we have a website. That's fully functional. Yes, That's, absolutely. Okay. We have a website. We have iPhone app, iPad app. Okay. We have a, a Mac uploader. A Mac uploader. We have a Windows uploader coming out. Coming. Okay. And um, are you looking at Windows RT or Android for the portable stuff at some point? We started on Android. It, it will take some time. Like yeah. I was saying earlier. When you want to solve a big problem like that, there are really a number of steps you need to go through. Like, I'll give you a very concrete example. Um, you need to have all your photos with you, right? That's also one of the prerequisites. Why right. would you always look for photos? Did I put it on Flickr? Did I put it on Facebook? Right. If I just want to show you my latest trip. Right. So they need to be on your phone or your iPad. But okay, then the problem portable is, device, yeah. The problem is these are still pretty limited uh, devices in terms of power. Right. And how do you make an application that's able to scroll through very, very fast, 10,000, 20,000 photos. So in itself, today, it's still very hard to do. And there are right. very few apps, if outside Apple, if any outside right. Apple, which are able to do this. Right. So that is just to say there are really lots of problems to technical problems just to be able to simplify everything. Well, there's the, the front end, but there's also the back end because mm -hmm. you're doing some taxonomy, right? That's, you're kind of that's massive. Yes, absolutely. So um, you, this is a big problem you tackle. Which part did you tackle first? Um, or you have to do it all at once? Well then it's easy to do everything half, right? right? And then not get a great product. Right. So we really built in layer, uh, started with let's move the photos in the cloud the most efficient way. Because this problem of moving stuff into the cloud, you could say has pretty much been solved. Uh, There's you know, PhotoStream or iCloud from Apple. Yes. For Android has this as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And then for generic, generic files, you have Dropbox and other solutions. Yeah. It works very well. Yeah. But then what's interesting with photos is they're not your random digital files. You cannot manipulate photos the way you manipulate text documents. Right. So, and they're also very big. They're getting bigger and bigger. If you yeah. buy a camera today on Amazon, it's going to be very hard to get anything with less than 10 megapixel right. sensor. That's 10 megabytes an image. Uh, that well, probably is 5, JPEG, 6. It's yeah, 5, but, 6. Like yeah. the latest one I bought, if, if I shoot in RAW, it's 26 megabyte per file. <laughs> and it's not even a, in raw. a, profession, you know, yeah. a big DSLR yeah. one. It's just yeah. a compact one. <laughs> So that's, that's becoming insane. Now, imagine you are not in a Silicon Valley bubble, but you are in a 
regular area, let's say in the United States, you're not going to have a massively fast internet connection. Your provider might nowadays even put a cap on how much you can upload. So even if you say... So well, I'm going to give up. You can't do what you just said you wanted to do. Well, so what we figured out <laughs> I got 11,000 pictures. Actually, I have many, many more. But let's say I have 11,000. So what we How realized, can you do that? Well, we realized we have to optimize the photos. There's no oh, choice. Oh, so you're, you're squeezing them. Well, we preserve full resolution, of course. Okay. We preserve absolutely all the metadata that is in the photo from the color profile, the EXIF, the XMP, the, everything. Okay. And we, then we take the, the raw um, image data in the JPEG, and we optimize it in a way that if you look at 100%, you, the average user will not see the difference. So you're not using, you're using a compression algorithm, but not JPEG. No, we're using a different one. Is it proprietary? More modern. It's it's not completely proprietary. We spend a lot of time optimizing. What what's it called? Well, it, it doesn't have an M. It's just it's an yours. Thing. You you're the only people who are doing it. Well, we're only the people using it this way. Oh, we use this is interesting. It. So and how much smaller are these images? So on average, it's like five x for us. And this is five x below the JPEG. Yeah, and it works very very well. And we spend a lot of time optimizing that. It's, you average out, like today, we have, of course, a single, the average user in our system brings in uh, more than 10,000 photos, and the average photo size after optimizations, you know, is less than 600 kilobytes. Okay. And that is spread out, of course, over all photos, which right. typically were 2 megabytes, 3 megabytes, right. and more recent ones, which are larger. But the point is, on average, you are moving content five times faster, and for the not people who are super technical necessarily who want to shoot in raw on this right. but for regular people there it wow. is the advantages are so big yeah that it's totally worth it because now you come back from your trip and you have your regular kind of slow connection and you need to bring 700 photos into the cloud we're going to be moving that five times faster that's wow. been verified in practice wow. so that's why people can move in 10,000 plus photos into our system we make it I'm doing it right now so I signed up you said don't do the Gmail yet because you're going to have OWASP yes, set up by exactly. Thursday. So that's fine. I left, let out the, uh, left that up. But I'm, but I'm on Everpix's site, and I have quite a few images. So it's still importing, I guess. Yes. So okay. it depends, of course. We have a system that needs to scale, you know, it's depending on how many few. people. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we just probably sent a few more people Yeah. So there. Depending Sorry. on the days, you know, we can get millions of photos coming in. It's, right. It happens. It's fine. And... Um, so you're recompressing. Do you store the original on your, on your side or no? No, we take a copy of the photo, full resolution, all metadata, and then we do a lot of great stuff with it. Like for and you throw out the original? We don't delete anything, never. We don't delete it anything. We don't delete it from your computer. No, no I'm going to have it. Yes, of course, of course. But this version that you store is the smaller well, version. Well, we, tran we transmit. It's full size, but we transmit right. this optimized version. Well, let's version. see. I, want, yes. I think maybe the seeing is believing on this. So this is the... Absolutely. And this is available now, the iPad app. It's free. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But, and I think this is good to point out right up front, and actually I think it's a good thing, this is not a free service. No, we want to build um, a sustainable company. Uh, exactly. So... Because there's a lot of storage and bandwidth, even with this compression, that you're going to be... Yes, there yeah. is that. And then... You know, if something is free, it will always come at a cost because right. your photos are not going to be full size or the, um, the reliability or is not going to be as good. you're giving a privacy. Yes. Let me, let me ask you before we go Absol any further. Yeah. What's the privacy on So th this? that's a very important question. Because we have the entire life of people in photos, we have to be extremely careful with that. So right. every user's account is completely siloed. Everything is completely private. There is nothing that's automatically shared or anything like that. And this is something... We will not and cannot afford to change going forward. Right. So you're, you're saying in your privacy policy, we're not going to share this information with anybody. Nobody else can see it. Your photos are yours. Absolutely. This is we your don't, stuff. The, we don't take any right on your photos. Absolutely. Right. No, we can't But do you that. are looking at metadata in the photos, GPS, yes. EXIF, stuff like yeah, that. Plus all the science we have. That's another very, very big, important component. But you're, but you're promising that this stuff is going to stay with you. We don't, we're not looking at it because you're paying us. Now, it's free for 30 days. And then Correct. how much is it? So we have uh, a monthly plan, which is $5 a month. And we have a yearly plan, which is only forty dollars a year. Okay, so it's that's comparable it. to Flickr, and uh, mm -hmm. maybe uh, it's less than something like Smug Mug, which is something yeah. I use. We do unlimited more. photos too, because since we have, and we you don't have a limit. No. Well, we design our system from scratch to be forward-looking. Right. We design everything to be able to handle twenty thousand plus photo collection per people. Wow. So that means, um, as part of that, is you don't want to go to your users and say well, here's a bunch of plans, figure out the one that works for you, and who knows what happens if you go above it. 
So it's, it's really, you know, to go back to this idea, it's really about optimizing all the pieces to have a great product. So and, the, and the end game is that I can now have, I've done this on, on my desktop yes. or wherever there's a storage, but now I have an app on my iPhone and my iPad Correct. that I can say, oh, come here, it's Thanksgiving or it's Christmas, let me show you my pictures right. of my trip. All right, so, so this let's, is the app. Let's look at how things work exactly. So once everything is in our system, you have, of course, you can look at it on the web. You can look at it on your iPad and your iPhone. So, for instance, this is our iPad app here. And you can see, I mean, obviously, we want it to be very um, beautiful and touchable and so on. What we have is these applications that are able to handle very large collections. My personal collection is like 16,000 photos, for instance, and it works as fast as this one, which is only a couple thousand photos. That's for demo purposes. And of course, you have what you would expect, the ability to navigate in groups of photos and you so could, on. You could, I would have said this is impossible, except for Cool Iris, Comic Flow, Quartz Composer. Uh, you really have the, the heritage to be able to do something. Yes, and I like we, this. yeah, and so you can zoom on any picture to the full size. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So it does look good, actually. Yeah, we're all about quality. I mean, yeah. um, you know, this is we are three co-founders to build this company. Um, Kevin uh, Kennison, who is my co-founder for all the science, uh, also comes from Apple, is. Uh, very big on image processing, and therefore uh, we spend a lot of time making sure we preserve the quality, we preserve the metadata properly. We're all about quality for this. And the other co-founder, Wayne, who takes care of all the design, obviously is also very it's big beautiful. about making yeah. a beautiful product and preserving right. the quality of photos. So if you have a MacBook Pro Retina, for instance, Which our do. entire website is Retina, including oh, your photos. Oh, that's nice. You know, how many photo websites do yeah, that today? that's really nice. So, and it's the same on your iPad. We're all Retina all over the place. Right. iPhone, iPad, all of that. S so, Go ahead. Keep yeah, I, I was just going to show you, like, you know, a number of products, of course, you can see your photos in your iPad, and, and that's not so much a big deal. But what's very interesting is what we do for your photos. So, first of all, we need to make it easy for people to move into our system. Because even if we think that going forward, people will stop managing their photos by hand, because it just doesn't make any sense anymore, you still did that in the past. So we don't want to trash that. If right. you have iPhoto, Aperture, Lightroom, I put a lot of work into it. Yeah. Yes. So we want to preserve that. Okay. So that's what this view here, the source view, is for, for instance. Okay. It mirrors exactly your iPhoto, Lightroom, Aperture, Library in our cloud. Okay. You know, even Apple or Adobe don't do that today. Right. You go into Aperture, you modify some groups, some albums, and so on. It's mirrored in our system, right? Okay. So here oh, you can see. Oh, that's interesting. Do I, I run something on my PC all the time to, correct. to have that? Okay in the background and it syncs continuously. So here we can see um, this little icon indicates this is an album coming from iPhoto, for instance. Oh, interesting. Uh, this is uh, just an album made of photos coming from a folder. And are on these disk. ordered uh, chrono chronologically? Yes, or? by default, yes. By default. Absolutely. Okay. And I can go, uh, you know, browse by years. Oops. I can go browse by year and look at um, all the photos, 2011, okay. everything I have in there, okay? So that makes it very easy for people to buy in into our system. Yeah. They can find their marks. Yeah. And of course, you know, we also do an interesting presentation, which is just what we call by moments, where we automatically organize by time your photos. And so presumably everything I took on one day was a, is that one moment or? It's everything you took within a certain time, you I know, see. time gap, time period, right? And um, I we group it automatically. Absolutely. Call it events. Yes, yeah. yes. We're not yeah. pretending we're inventing anything okay. new here, yeah. um, but it's always practical as a view. Right. Now, so far, what you've seen, you know, is already practical, but it doesn't represent our real vision. Our right. real vision is this. It is this thing here, which is called the highlight view, because that's where we start solving the real problem, which is once you have all your 20,000 photos in one place, how do we make sense of it? Right. So let me backtrack a little bit here. And I can show you, for instance, so I photo on this iPad. So here we have a trip from um, when my, my co-founder, who went to North Korea and took, obviously, a lot of photos to <laughs> uh, memorize that, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, military parades and so <laughs> right. on. And what's interesting here is that this is made by Apple for the flagship product, the iPad, right? right. iOS platform, And they charge you $4.99 for it, yep. 
And this is more of the same. This is the same stuff we've <laughs> been not, having for 10 years. It's not really very good, is it? Now that you, no, I mean, now that you it, compare it, yeah. It's well done, but it doesn't really solve anything. Yeah, so you yeah. want to show the photos from your trip. You have all this redundancy there right. of the parade photos. And then let right. me show you this one and then that one. And then you skip fast and you show a different one. Right. It's, still, it's I've, so This boring, is what I've been right? doing lately, yeah. So now let's look at what this looks like in, in our system. So in highlights, what we do is we take all the photos of a given year and we're able of course to deduplicate everything so if you have the same photo there's that no comes, dupes we never have dupes in that's good system. because i'm uploading it from instagram and picasso yes. and so we there would be everything dupes. independently okay. of compression artifacts from the jpeg right independently of size by know. the way what formats can i upload only jpeg only jpeg yes. right now okay. we're very very focused we want our goal is really to build a product that works for the average user. It's, that's why what you say it's not for pros or the, yes. or the uh, prosumer because you're, you're not doing RAWs. We're you're just doing, doing JPEG. We're doing okay. JPEG, which should cover more than 95% of every photo ever I've taken. I've lately right? started shooting RAW plus JPEG because iPhoto, same mm -hmm. thing. You have to give it a JPEG. So, and um, you can use RAW with our system. That's fine. I shoot in RAW, for instance. Yeah. And what matters when you do RAW, what's interesting, it's, it's actually the development of the photo. Right. It's not the RAW in itself. No. You have to go into Aperture or Lightroom and, and, and work with it. it's your own work. So that then I'm going to output we'll a synchronize JPEG that that's going to synchronize. Automatically. So in Aperture, all the developed version of my RAWs are synchronized Got in it. Everpix. You don't look at the RAWs. You just look we at the developed ones. We don't need that, ones. really. Yeah, that makes sense. So anyway. Uh, we that actually is great because there's a lot of junk and I don't want all of that. I just want the stuff that I said, oh, yeah, that's good enough to work on. That's good enough to work exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah, so we, we take all this and then we deduplicate. Um, we understand something that's very interesting uh, and very important these days is people take more and more photos of the same thing. Mm -hmm. You take 10 shots of the I same do. scene. I do. Yep. Just in case right. you don't want to miss right. the perfect one. Right. right. So not only are photo collections getting bigger, but they're becoming more and more redundant. Redundant, yeah. If you want to clean up this mess, you've got to be able to recognize this redundancy. You're going to be able to pick the best say, one. Exactly. So well, how do, you don't do that. Do we you? do that. That's the whole point of the highlight view. How That's would you even know what the together. best one was? <laughs> so what we do here is, first of all, you've got to be able to understand these are photos that are similar. Yes. Right? There's so 20 photos of a tank. If you go uh, just back one second you can to this, see. this example you can see. here, exactly. you see the, really the redundancy. And it's tricky yeah. to detect. It's not, these are not duplicate photos because the composition changed. They're only the similar. The is moving, yeah. right? And it's not just a matter of looking at a timestamp of the photo because there are many cases it's not going to work. You need to literally look at the photo and understand what is the subject of the photo? What are the features? What it is about? You know, so we do all this, and we're able because of that to understand this series of photos is really of the same subject, independently of the variance in composition and so on and lighting and this and that. Okay, we're able to understand. We go even further than that. Yeah. Um, my my co-founder Kevin, who does all the science, I build a completely unique system that allows us to literally understand what the photos are about. So a photo like this, for example, we understand it's a photo of a vehicle on a street. Right. A photo of people in nature, we wow. can know that. You know, so you're we, going beyond face recognition to object recognition. We're not doing fa face recognition. We're actually doing a generalized understanding wow. of photos. We call that semantic tagging, semantic analysis. And it's really what it is. And we keep improving the system. And today we're able to already say, that's a close-up of a photo of food. That's a photo of a group of people. That looks like a, a wide shot of, um, you know, a beach, for example. Right. This type of things. And we keep improving that system. And that is fed into the highlight view. So with all this knowledge of all the metadata we have, all the semantic analysis we do, all the deduplication, all the understanding of series of shots that, talk, that are the same thing, we're able to take these thousands of photos and extract what matters. So here, the same North Korea trip, it's actually something you can navigate You like don't this. have 80 pictures of a tank. You don't. You have one or two. All the photos that How kind of matter. How do you pick which one to show? So here, that's kind of the, the last step. Once we figure out, okay, that's a lot of redundancy here. Let's try to pick one. We look at a number of things. We look at, of course, the composition of the photo. What's on the line of the search? You know, is it, is it more or really? sharp? Really? You actually yeah. look at yeah, yeah. Like focus, uh, yeah. focus uh, color, exposure. exposure. And that is bound to become better, better and better. Yeah, sure. At the same time, I don't want to give um, illusions that we can choose for you the best photo. That's right. not our job, and right. everyone has a different definition of what a best photo is. Right. What we do, however, is we really 
extract the one that matter. If you have 10 photos of, in this case, a tank, you're not going to see 10 photos of a tank anymore. Right. You know? And it already helps so much in making a Can I drill system. down and say, now I want to see Absolutely. all the photos? Absolutely. So if you tap on any photo, you can see, as a moment, all the photos that are related, that were taken around this time. Now right? we're going to see all the yes. tank photos. With all the redundancy, so Got it. Uh, you don't miss anything. So really, the highlight view is the highlights to exactly. give us, it's almost an index into it. It's, it's without a the redundancy of yeah. what you've done on a given year. Yeah. And it's oh, really, I can't really wait cool. to get my photos in. You know, and it's all beautiful and fast. And it works especially well, I would say, if we can see it here. Oh, you have the iPhone too. Yes. It works especially well on the iPhone because this is what people have been used to for a few years. Right. A grid like that, right? Right. And this is not a matter of improving the design of the grid. This is a matter of Remo making the grid easier to understand and to navigate. So here's the same thing here on the iPhone app. If I go to highlights, now I have... Oh, that's neat. You know, not only is it better looking, because also when we think that a photo is interesting, we make it, we make it bigger. Can you airplay this if I wanted to uh, put this through the Apple TV? Yes, I see no reason why yeah. it wouldn't work. You didn't block it. Or no, 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 yeah, not at all. Yeah. And here you can see this is the trip. So you're at dinner. You want to show your trip, the recent trip. Right. Happens all the time. And you like this, and you, you can... There it is, and now we have it, and I can go like this. Right, that, and these, are, these are the photos, and it contains all the key stuff. Yeah. Maybe we're going to miss one photo out of... It doesn't matter, it's still... No, at least you can show me. them, In fact, right? the people I'm showing it to hope I'll miss a few photos. Yeah. Right, and you really have the key cool. things. Yeah. Like and this. And the quality is great, and... The, now, do I... St am I storing those photos on the phone? So what we do is we store... Um, thumbnails on the phone. The cash. Right? Yes. Well, all, this, all the photos, all the thumbnails are always on the phone. Okay, but so that's, that's not a thumbnail. Fast. That's a fuller... Or is that a thumbnail? That is a... That is... Sorry. That is um, a full-size photo. Absolutely. Okay. So these we only cache the latest one you looked at. For obvious reasons, wow. there's not enough well, space. Well, that's pretty speedy. Thing. So you're... So yeah. what, these are loading as you slide through them? They're actually... Correct. Yeah, now it's high-res. You can see there's a little spinner in the bottom right that shows when it's wow. loading the photo. Wow, that's We optimize great. our entire infrastructure from the start to really be able to handle 20,000 photos per account at least, at the minimum. Without filling up the memory on the phone or on the iPad. Every, yeah, everything. It was designed from that. We're building for the future, really. This is cool. And it, it's, um, there are lots of problems in being able to do that. Like, we're also making sure that if you and I have the same photo and you upload them from your computer, you're not going to re-upload them because we already have them. Ah, so you dedupe it there. We also the dedupe, dedupe at the source, pre dedupe at the source. Do you have you other want. sharing systems yet, or sharing, is that something coming down the road? We How have sharing, that? of course. Oh, okay. And um, I can show you on the iPad. Because I tied this a into my bigger. Facebook and my Flickr and my Instagram yes. and my Twitter. So we, we can absolutely do all this. Uh, if you want to share photos, the big advantage is we have uh, all your photos in our system for right. resolution, so it's very fast. I just select some photos like this, and then you can push to Facebook, Twitter. Uh, or the usual and does it link page. back to uh, Everpix, or where does it... So it depends what you do. If you push to Facebook, you just create an album with the photos. Okay. And we push them at 2K, which is the highest resolution. Oh, okay. Facebook so support. you're sending a good quality... Absolutely. Facebook also compresses for, for And they recompress yeah, the yeah. photo anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. And PhotoMail, for instance, is our own um, uh, sharing. Not that we want to reinvent the wheel at all, because Facebook works very well and Twitter right. works very well for sharing. But we also use the opportunity that we have here to solve this long time problem of giving digital copies of photos right. to people. Right. Like in the past you could print actual copies of your photos and give them to the your family right. and so on. Right. Nowadays the problem is they all end up in various websites and then people have to download them or you're gonna give them on some file sharing service and you have to make all these efforts, right? Yes. What so I just seen? email, what are they getting, a link now? So no, no, they're getting the photos. So they get, let's they take, get their personal copy. Let's, let's take an example here, right? So I select, say I want to share some of these photos I just do photo mail, select the recipient, and I can enter any email address, of course, and that's it. They They're, get those photos. Right, and then, then they get... Um, Except oops. we've brought your site down. Yeah, well, I guess that's possibly what's <laughs> happened. We have too many viewers at once and an uh, early-stage startup. We'll Are you using Amazon uh, for uh, storage, S3? We're or? using, yes. We're using the usual, uh, like a uh, lot of startup. EC3. Uh, yeah, and, uh, EC2, uh, all of that, EC2 absolutely. Rather, yeah, S3 yeah. and so on and so on. Cool. It makes it very easy to get started. That's really neat. Yes. We're talking to Paul. Pierre Olivier Latour, and we'll talk a little bit more uh, as we continue with triangulation. Actually, this is your chance to ask questions. We'll, ch we'll give the chat room a chance to ask in just a moment. Uh, also, uh, program note, iPad Today is coming up in just a bit. Sarah Lane has showed up. So we're going to do a, a special iPad Today as we pre-record. She's off to Paris for Le Web 
in uh, just a few days. So stay tuned for that. Um, our show today brought to you by uh, a great company for people who want to buy media for use in their PowerPoints or podcasts or keynote presentations, but also people who create media. It's called Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If, uh, if you are, you know, it's funny. I talked to the folks at Pond5. They said many of our customers are both. They are media creators. They take their photographers or videographers. They use, uh, you know, After Effects or, th- or uh, uh, 3D or they do music or sound effects. So they sell their stuff on Pond5, but they, the same people who do that very often are the people who media creators who are also doing presentations. They have podcasts. They, have, they need music for their videos, and they get those from Pond5. Royalty-free. Uh, you get photos. There, I mean, check there. There's more than a million photos there. Actually, more than 10 million professional quality photos. Fo- vector illustrations. You see the counts there. I love that. Video clips. Uh, sound effects, music tracks, motion graphic templates, 3D models, and more, and growing all the time in every category. They've got the best browser I've ever used. It's very easy to find what you need. They even have a free clip every single week, so you can get your clip of the week. Uh, developers use Pond5 for sound effects for games. Designers use Pond5 so they don't have to build everything from scratch. Video and filmmakers use it uh, for just the right shot. You know, you got everything, but you needed a thunderclap. Well, don't worry, Pond5 got it. They've got crocodiles, lots of them. So, media maker or artist, you got to check out Pond5. And we've got a special deal. They brought this back. They did this last year, and I love this. Uh, 50 free stock media downloads. No cost, no obligation. If you go to pond5.com slash triangulation. 50, just do that. 50 free Stock media downloads. Actually, it's a good it's a good chance to get the Pond Five account set up. No cost to you. Uh, you could see get it kind of use their browser, see how easy it is, and, and get the stuff you need. So I think that's a great place to go right now. Pond Five P O N D the number five dot com slash triangulation, and you can get your hypno loops. <laughs> I'm feeling sleepy. Pond5, you will go to pond5.com and download your 50 free stock media. Pond5.com slash triangulation. We're talking to Paul, the creator, I I think, of the best comic book application. (laughs) And I'm really pleased to see you're still doing it, even though you've got this other thing. Uh, Comic flow is still alive and well. Yes, in all fairness. still free. It's free. It's it's just you know a side project I did I think uh, a year and a half ago. I was really frustrated with the state of comic reading apps. Yeah. And um, because if you have a large collection, none of them was able to handle a large collection. Right. They were crashing. They were slow. Right. And it was a terrible pen. So I just wanted to fix that. And <laughs> so I built this. Are one. you a comic book collector? Obviously, you are. So I need to give a bit of, of context here. It's that um, in the French. Um, language, there is actually a very strong culture of what we call graphic novels. Right. That's the most accurate translation, right? right? Bande dessinée right. in French. And this is actually a very different world from the comic oh, book agree. world. Oh, I agree. A different type of heroes, uh, yes. a lot of history. Uh, it's really high quality fiction in all of cases. Uh, and of course, this old type of genres. So there is very, very interesting um, graphic artists doing this work, very interesting books. And now you can, of course, access all that digitally, more or less legally, right? Right. And um, we're not talking Marvel and DC here. This stuff is, a, but you know, I have to say, I grew up on Tintin mm-hmm. and quite a few French comics for mm-hmm. children. Yes. And I think that probably your generation Absolutely. did Everyone as well. Did. Yes, yes. And so it makes sense that as you get to be adults, now you want the same kind of treatment, but mm-hmm. of adult. Uh, content. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And I think graphic novels have taken off in the U.S. Uh, worldwide now. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not just uh, Superman and Batman. Right. I mean, Watchmen was a good Watch- example. Amazing. Right. Amazing. Yes. Very yeah. good work. Yeah. So now imagine instead of one very well known like that in the U.S., right. imagine like hundreds, right, oh, in that's French neat. language. And it's, what's a little sad here is that there's apparently no demand or market to translate that. Oh, that's too bad. And, and get it to in the hands I'd love of American to see readers. Those. Well, learn French. Yes. So what do too. you like? Recommend some so uh, people watching can... Uh... Oh, you know, off the top of my head, I mean, there are, really, there are so many these days. It's, is I there a site to go to? to start. 
Oh, I'd love to. I want to get into it. I read enough French that I probably could. Oh, there least, you go. Sort of. And it's, it's a graphic novel, so yes. it's not so hard. It's not like reading You it. would be surprised because um, of, all the historical lot of, ones, right? Um, a lot of them were done in the 80s. I mean, 1980s, they right. were writing a lot of uh, graphic novels that were happening uh, during the 17th century, 16th oh, century, really? and so oh, on. Neat. Because, well, there's so many great stories you can right. do, right? The Three Musketeers. And, and a lot of writers then would go uh, to a lot of pen to use accurate words of the time. Oh. And very often when you read so them... they're archaic. I have to look up the words. <laughs> even, you know? even you do. Right. <laughs> so it's and there's not probably a lot of easy. slang in the modern ones, so you're right, it's hopeless. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to start to find some and download them. That's, uh, you've got me intrigued now. And of course I'll be reading them on my iPad in Comic Flow. Uh, and I am already uploading my pictures... Um, to ever picks, I think this is a really uh, a great idea. When did you go public? Uh, well, your beta. We we st we had a beta for about uh, six eight months maybe. Um, it's not really limited, but in the sense that we weren't doing any promotion around it. Right. So whoever stumbles upon it and is intrigued right. was able to try it, and that's it. Um, but we had this interesting problem where we had to build the product too. At the same time, we were testing it. Right. Uh, but with the scale of every new user who comes in, brings in thousands and thousands a lot of photos. Of pictures. So you end up spending your time maintaining the infrastructure or building the product. Right. So that's why we, we stayed under the radar for about a year. Because you really Just wanted building, to. Just building, building, evolving. Wow. Uh, having some users who are willing to beta test, that's perfectly right. fine. But now the product, we feel with the addition of the highlight view, really gets uh, close to our vision. Yeah. And you have a real product that solves a concrete problem and not just a series of features put together, right? Uh, so now we're happy to start promoting it and exposing and charging Good. people for it and so on. Good. I can't wait to, uh, I can't wait to see it. There's importing them uh, right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give the chat room a chance if you have some questions. Um, some people are wondering, like F and Dunn in our chat room, about other services to feed images, could you take RSS feeds, for instance, or that? You know, honestly, that that's not really a technical problem to do that. We could sync like a gazillion services. Right. You know, once you've done three or four, like we've right. done, the rest is more or less the same. So you're looking at that? Well, in our case, we really want to get the original photos. Right. We want to get the full resolution. We want to get all the metadata. Got so it. we'd much rather have you import them from your computer. That's the so even though you support Instagram and Facebook and all that, the best thing to do. Will be use the uploader. Yes, and, because uh, and think about that. it. One of the the best issue is your photos are not in the cloud in the first place because it's hard to put them in. Right. No matter what. Right. So if we just synchronize with services, for example, Flickr, who has time to upload twenty thousand right. photos by hand to Flickr? Very few right. people do that. It's really a subset so of everything. So no matter what, we have right. to grab the photos at the source. And we, when you dedupe, you will prefer the, the higher yeah, quality. Yeah, we always, always do that. Yeah. And we preserve also the information of all the sources, which That's is very nice. interesting. So That's if you have the nice. same photo in Facebook, right. the same photo on your hard drive, the same photo in iPhoto, for instance. You're going to merge all yeah, of that? Yeah, we merge all of that. That's we merge great. all the metadata, and you can see yeah. it when you look at the information of the photo. You have this photo in Facebook, in Instagram, in uh, on your hard drive, or who knows. Green LED is uh, concerned about privacy. If he, he says, is there a way, if I decide I don't want you to keep my photos anymore, I want Want to move on and to permanently delete absolutely those? that's we're very big on privacy so we're one of the few services to actually delete your photos for real if you delete your account good for you there is um there is of course like a 30-day latency in our system in case yeah, you yeah. delete stuff by mistake right. uh, but after that they're they're really deleted from our servers you don't, don't want them <laughs> just waste space on your hard drives uh, you did mention you're working on an Android uh, version. You got a timetable yet for that? Or? Nothing that we can share at yeah. this point. You yeah. know, it's like uh, I've briefly shown with our uh, iPad and iPhone app, um, we have to be able to build an app that can handle 20,000 photos and be very fast and very responsive. It's challenging, right? Yeah. And uh, on iOS, it's, we have the advantage of having very few models to play with. So it simplifies development and testing and so right. on. Uh, Android has... A, wider user base now and has come with also more type of devices right. you need to support. So we, we want, like everything we do, we want to take our time to do it right. Yep. So we started working on it, but there's nothing we can share at this point. And a Windows uploader is coming also. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. in beta already, yes. That's, we, so that's closer? Yes, yeah. absolutely. No, Good. totally Good. by the end of the year. Good. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just checking for the chat room for questions. They're having a side conversation right now. <laughs> Can you embed the photos in a web page? In other words, can I get a link to an individual photo? Um, we don't really support that today. Yeah. 
Um, that would be an unnecessary use of your bandwidth. Then you'd be providing a photo service as opposed yes. to... Yes. I mean, yeah. you know, when we say we support illimited photos, it's because we don't want the user to have to right. deal with plans and so on, but we right. also make it clear this is not for commercial use. Right, right. Um, how about, uh, let's see, we're just looking at that. Widgets, asks Vince360. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, like little to embed a gallery, maybe, yeah. in your website? Yeah. No, we, we don't do that yeah. today. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you, uh, do you have an interface, an API, or an RSS feed, or any other way that I could get data out of? Uh, not at this point. No. You want people to use your apps to we're, view. We're not trying to hold the people's data hostage, but right. you know, we're a six-people company, a uh, couple of contractors. Right. We have a lot on our plate, uh, a very complex pro uh, problem that we're tackling. Right. A lot of infrastructure to build, a lot of design. We can only do so much. Yeah, so yeah. No, we I think focus that's on, on the core. I actually, right I now. think we're at a stage, it's very interesting to watch as the years go by, where people are becoming more realistic about their financial model, mm -hmm. about how much they can do. They've built a few companies. They're starting to understand that the go-go years of saying, hey, we'll, we'll worry about you know scaling later, or we'll worry about users later, or how to make money monetization later. People are kind of being a little more measured. And I think it's even think more true in our space, like in the yes. photo space, because it's so overloaded. Yes. I mean, we didn't choose to go there because it was overloaded, but that's a matter of fact. It happens And to you me, have to yeah. compete with a lot of free products. Right. And uh, even if a lot of these products are really pretty bad, still it gives the impression that in a photo space, things should essentially be free. Uh, but we want to build uh, a long-term company. We need to be profitable. Right. We're building a quality service. We don't want to destroy all our beautiful design by adding ads and things like that. Right. So uh, we have to, to charge customers. Right. We give you a full that's fair. trial. Uh, 40 bucks a year is a very fair amount of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can I exp if I have an image on my screen, can I save it out to my camera roll? Or? Um, we have that in the next version, actually. That's Not coming. the version on the App Store, yes. Got it. That was another question. Uh, Effin Dunn wanted to uh, know. <laughs> How do you block the government, asks Andy in Germany. It's always the Germans that want to yes. know that. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, the and European, it's not their government, yeah. it's our government. They're worried more about the U.S. government, yeah. Well, I don't, honestly, you know, it's hosted on Amazon servers. <laughs> you um, can't, you can't. If Amazon gets a support now, and yeah, it's yeah. like we're all in the same boat here. We're all in the same boat, exactly. Um, That's, he says, it's be, your Swiss heritage is showing, be responsible with finances. <laughs> but, uh, but don't, yeah, that's true. High risk, high reward. But I think that this all makes a lot of sense. Android version's coming. Windows version is almost uh, there. Um, and uh, if you want to sign up, all you have to do is go to everpix.com and yes, get 30 so days free. That simple. Do what I did. It's importing now, my stuff mm -hmm. now. And I'm going to, uh, maybe in time for iPad today, I'll download uh, the app. And I can show people my uh, my cruise pictures. That'd be great. Which I haven't shown anybody because it's too much trouble to get it all up into the Google Plus. You think you'll have a support Google Plus uh, image? You've put, well, you do. Picasso we have Web. Picasso Web. So yes. Picasso Web. All your images, if you are using Google Plus, are stored on Picasso. Yes. Web. So that uh, it, it should work. I mean, Google that. Plus is still pretty restrictive with their APIs today. Yeah. Um, like we cannot post. Picasso to, Web's the way yes. to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, I wish you the best. I think this is. Uh, I can't wait to use this. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Everpix.com, Pierre-Olivier Latour. Mm -hmm. And thank you for uh, Quartz Composer, <laughs> for Comic Flow, for cool, the stuff you did at Cool Hours. Discover was so cool. We've shown a lot of your stuff on oh, our shows. Oh, glad you liked it, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know it was all the same guy. You have a real knack for beautiful design well, and really you. making that stuff uh, sing. I can't wait to play with it. Thank you. Thank you very Paul, much for nice to me. meet you. Yes. And thank you all for joining us at Triangulation. We do the show every Wednesday uh, around about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2300 UTC. If you're watching outside the U.S., please tune in. We love having a live audience. As you can see, the chat room is very important. And try to focus if you're in the chat room and ask questions, okay? Don't leave me hanging here, all right? Uh, but you can also get the show after the fact. Anytime, audio and video on demand at twit.tv. Best yet, subscribe. And then you'll get every... And you don't want to miss. This is the one show you really don't want to miss. There's always somebody interesting on triangulation. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.